Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to start our second topic, which is on capital gains tax. Now, we have been studying income tax, and the reason I have spent a lot of time studying income tax is because it is a, one thing, it is a huge topic, and another thing that the things which we are going to study after income tax, most of the things will be exactly the same which we have already seen in income tax. So we won't be spending much time studying capital gains tax, corporation tax, inheritance tax or value tax. Some of the topics are already small anyway, but even if they are a little bigger, then we won't be spending much time on them, right? So capital gains tax. What, is, what was income tax? Income tax was the tax which we pay on our income and which we pay on uh, our different sources of income like dividend income, interest income, uh, trading income, uh, stuff like that. Now trading income, what was that? Whenever I am doing some business, and I will be paying a trading profit, I will be paying tax on the trading profit, which is income tax. Now when I'm doing business, uh, I might be doing, uh, I might be selling something. So if I am doing business of, uh, if I have an Apple store, I'm selling iPads and iPhones, that is my trading income. But what if I only sell this one iPad? My primary business is not uh, selling the iPads, but I just bought this iPad and I'm after using few, after using for some period of time, I'm going to sell this iPad. Now, will I have to pay income tax or will I have to pay capital gains tax on that? Now, these are complicated things that whether we have to pay income tax or whether we have to pay capital gains tax. Now, let's look at the notes and then we will try to differentiate when we have to pay income tax and when do we have to pay capital gains tax. If you come to page number 30 of your lecture notes, I have six lecture notes, page number 30, and that is our capital gains tax chapter, just leave this page for now, come to next page, which is page number 31. Uh, this is badges of trade. So it, the, if you look at these tests, then you will understand when you have to pay capital gains tax and when do we have to pay uh, income tax. Right then, first one it says, uh, sorry, first of all it says, if a sale is to be distinguished, it says, says if to be, it's not if, it is is. So if, if a sale is to be distinguished, that whether it is a trading transaction to be treated as income tax, what is trading transaction when you're doing the business? So if it is a trading transaction to be taxed in income tax or it is an asset disposal which should be treated as capital gains tax, then the following factors should be considered. Now if I'm selling one off iPad, then it is capital gains tax which I have to pay on that. When I'm selling lots of iPads every day, which is my business, then I'll be paying uh, income tax excuse me, which will be my trading income. Now, how to determine, so the, we'll have to see these tests. <coughs> excuse me, first one is a subject matter. Whether a person is trading or not may be decided on the subject matter of the transaction. Some assets are held as an investment for their intrinsic value, like for example, painting, right? And then it says, but the subject matter may be that cannot be held as an investment instead it is a trading transaction. So for example, if we sell uh, you know, 34 million yards of aircraft linen or 1 million rolls of toilet paper. So obviously when uh, you're buying 1 million rolls of toilet paper, you're not gonna use it for yourself, uh, you know, unless you have a Hulk or a, you know, King Kong as your pet. Uh, you know, humans don't need that many, kind, that many uh, rolls of toilet paper, do they? So obviously when you, have buying, you have, when you have bought one million rolls of toilet papers, then definitely it is an indication that you're doing the business, you will have to pay income tax. Next one in the B, it says frequency of transactions. So if you have been doing the same transaction again and again, it means that you are doing the business. After that, it says length of ownership. So if you are length of ownership, if you have owned this asset for less period, it means you are doing the business. If you have held this asset for quite a long time, then you know it does not necessarily mean that you will be doing the business. Uh, you know you you know you might be uh, you might have kept it as part of the as, as part of your other assets, right? So then you will have to pay capital gains tax on that. So it says uh, length of ownership. If the asset was held for a long period of time, then it is indication that it is an investment. Uh, but if the length of period is uh, small, then it may, be, may indicate a business activity and you will have to pay income tax. 
supplementary work and marketing so if you have bought an asset and you have done some marketing on that so if I have just bought this iPad and I, then I put it on eBay and Gumtree uh, then it means that I'm doing a business right and I'm doing some uh, you know fancy work on, on, on the iPad as well so it is strong indication that I'm doing the business profit motive it is obvious so obvious that if I have profit mo motive then I will have to pay income tax because I'm doing business the way that uh, the way in which the asset was acquired so if it was if I've inherited this iPad from my dad and mom from my parents then uh, you know it I will have to pay capital gains tax and then if I have bought this iPad then I might have to pay income tax I might have a uh, trading activity in my mind and after that taxpayers intention obviously it depends on the intention as well uh, so it says that if from the above mentioned criteria if it is still unclear about the transaction if the, it is a trading activity or not then the taxpayers intention shall be considered right so after looking at them criteria then, then now we have a little idea about when we have to pay capital gains tax and when do we have to pay income tax so when I am doing a business activity I will have to pay income tax when I am selling just one off asset uh, and then I will have to pay capital gains tax now when I'm selling the asset do we have to pay capital gains tax at that time or what no whenever I am making a gain whenever I am uh, making a profit on that only then I will have to pay capital gains tax so let's see how to calculate capital gains tax we'll take the sales first of all and then we'll deduct the incidental cost of sales so if you have paid something towards the commission or something like that that will be deducted out of the, out of the sales a cost will be also deducted which you have paid for this asset enhancement expenditure if you have done something on on the on the asset to make it more attractive that cost will also be deducted and the net amount is going to be either a gain or a loss so you can also have gain or you could have loss as well so if you have a gain you will have to pay capital gains tax right now if you come to page number 32 of your lecture notes that is our uh, capital gains tax for individuals that is a, a pro forma for individuals and it says uh, uh, complete format without entrepreneurs relief now what is entrepreneurs relief now normal rate of capital gains tax is different which is higher uh, however if you are eligible for one relief which is entrepreneurs relief we will study in a while what is entrepreneur relief but for now just assume it is one relief it is one relief if you are eligible to that relief then you will have to pay reduced rate of capital gains tax which is 10 percent right now this says it uh, this pro forma is excluding that so it is without entrepreneur relief now first of all it says asset a was bought and so we'll take the sales uh, the incidental cost of sales and cost will be deducted and enhancement expenditure as well so it will give us the gain right now in the second one it says assets qualifying for entrepreneur relief right so assets which qualify for entrepreneur relief now will uh, take them ones why we are putting them separate because there is a separate rate of tax that's why we are keeping them separate and the uh, reason is that whenever we are setting off the capital losses now the earlier losses which we have seen were trading losses and I've shown you minutes ago then when we are calculating the capital gains tax we can either have capital gain or the capital loss so if we have a capital loss we can set off that capital loss against future years capital gains or the current year or the previous year we will see later but we can set off the capital losses right so when we are setting off the capital losses so it is always wise decision it is always better to set off the capital losses against the highest paying capital gains right so if we are setting the capital gains against the assets qualifying for entrepreneur relief it is not good because assets qualifying for entrepreneur relief are subject to at the rate of 10 percent capital gains tax anyway so th they are at the reduced rate of capital gains tax so we, we won't be setting off against them we will be setting off against uh, you know higher highest paying uh, assets so that's why we are keeping them separate and uh, it is the same way we calculate the tax capital gains tax on that and after that it says current year loss so we'll deduct the current year loss out of it and after that it tells us the uh, asset number three as well at asset number c and it is calculated in the same way uh, it is calculated in the same way too 
right? Now this third asset, we have incurred a loss on that, and then we will deduct the loss uh, from the profits so that we can reduce the profit. After that, it says less capital losses brought forward. So if you have any previous year's capital losses, that will be deducted out after that. Now while deducting uh, you know, capital losses brought forward, please make sure you can only deduct up until the annual exempt amount. So you will have to leave the annual exemption. Right, so that's what it says just beneath that, up to the amount that the annual exemption remains. And after that, it will be a chargeable gain. Now, for capital gains tax purposes, uh, annual exemption is uh, 11,100. Uh, so in income tax, we get personal allowance, and in capital gains tax, we get annual exemption of 11,100. Right, now, if I am living in the UK, I will not only be eligible for personal allowance, I will also be eligible for capital gains tax annual exemption, so I will have both of them uh, if I am, uh, you know, UK resident. After that, I will have to pay, you know, taxable uh, on the taxable gain. I will have to pay capital gains tax. Now, what is the rate of capital gains tax? It tells us the different rates. So, uh, we will have to see according to the banding. So, which banding, which we have seen on the first page of the notes, right? So, there were different bands, and then bands will be given to you in the exam anyway. Right? So according to them bands, we will decide if he is a basic rate taxpayer, higher rate taxpayer, or the additional rate taxpayer. But please remember, them bandings will first be allocated to the income tax, then the annual remaining amount will be allocated to the capital gains tax. Right? So let's say, for example, if I have employment income of £10,000, that £10,000, uh, you know, uh, the basic rate band will use this £10,000 first, then we will decide about the capital gain if I have any, then that capital gain will use the upper portion, uh, the higher uh, portion of the uh, bandings, right? So, you know, in most likely cases, the capital gain tax will go in the second band, like higher rate band or additional rate band, right? So, capital gain tax, unused remaining starting rate band at the rate of 10%, unused basic rate band at the rate of 10%, and if it is higher or additional rate band, it is at the rate of 20%. Please remember that uh, if it is an entrepreneur relief, we will have to pay capital gains tax at the rate of 10%, right? All right then, after that it says capital gains tax payable by individuals on page number 33. First, the income tax bands are used to calculate the income tax. Any unused bands are used to calculate capital gains tax. Capital gains tax is 10% uh, at the rate of basic rate band and 20% on above that and it is paid by 31st January after the tax year. So for 31st January, <coughs> excuse me, for our current tax year, it is going to be 31st January 2018, right? Another thing as well, if you want to add here, if you, want, if you have any uh, pen and paper with you, please make sure you add one thing here. It says the 10% and 20% is the normal tax rate. Now, uh, another tax rate, which is 18% and 28%, that tax rate is uh, applicable for the residential property, right? If you want to write down, please make sure you write down. If it is a residential property, tax rate is 18% in the basic rate band and 28% in the higher rate band, right? So please make sure you write down. If it is a residential property, tax rate is 18% up to the basic rate band, <coughs> excuse me, and 28% uh, in the higher rate band only for residential property. Now, which will be the residential property that is used for residential purposes, but examiner won't examine in, you know, in complex scenarios. He will tell you, if he examines anything like that, he will tell you in the question that it is a residential property. However, for residential property, the rate of, rates are 18% and 28%. And for rest of the capital gains tax, it is 10% and 20, 20%. And another tax rate as well, which I have told you earlier, if we, we qualify for entrepreneurial relief, we will have reduced rate of capital gains tax, which is 10%. Exempt assets. So if you make any gain, if you sell, you know, sell anything out of that, uh, you will have to pay no tax. It is exempt for capital gains tax purposes on these uh, stuff, on these items. After that, it's, <coughs> excuse me, tells us about entrepreneur relief. What is entrepreneur relief? Now, entrepreneur, as you know, is a businessman. As someone who has, uh, you know, started their own business. So, entrepreneurial relief will be available on the gains of the following: disposal of whole or part of the business owned for at least one year before disposal. So, say for example, if I have a small shop, 
and uh, I've used that shop for one year. Uh, I've uh, I did some trading, and after one year, uh, I have sold that shop. So on that on sale of that shop, I will have a, I will have entrepreneur relief. I will have uh, I, I will qualify for entrepreneur relief because uh, I have that business which I have used for one year. Then I am selling it, so I will have entrepreneur relief. Disposal of whole or part of the business owned for at least one year before disposal, uh, the business is sold as a going concern, as I, uh, I did. And the second condition is that disposal of one or more assets uh, at the time when the business ceases, owned at least for one year before disposal, and the asset is sold within the three years of trade cessation. So say, for example, if I am a partner in the same shop, but I have another partner as well, uh, and uh, I'm using, I don't know what, I'm using an air conditioner or a heater, uh, that is my asset, but I am using in the business. So if I sell that asset, I will qualify for entrepreneurial relief. Not I will qualify, that asset will qualify, sorry. So the last condition is disposal of shares in a personal company where you hold 5% shareholding is called personal company and the individual is an officer or an employee of the company. The company must be a trading company. It cannot be investment company. So share disposed must be owned for at least one year before disposal. So that is also one of the conditions. So any of these conditions, if any of these conditions apply, we will have an entrepreneurial relief and we will pay tax at the rate of 10%. Right? Now, new thing is added, uh, which is investor's relief. Now, for entrepreneurial relief, the limit is 10 million pounds a year. Um, sorry, 10, 10 million pounds for lifetime. Uh, and uh, this limit is extended by the investor's relief, which is a new thing. So, as you can see on the screen, entrepreneurial relief <coughs> excuse me, has now been extended to external investors in a trading company. Uh, which is not listed on the London Stock Exchange and the investor relief has its own 10 million lifetime limit with qualifying gains being taxed at the rate of 10%. Right? So in, under the investor relief as well, tax rate is at the rate of 10% and uh, tax, uh, what is investor relief where the shareholder buy in a company, where shareholders buy shares in a company which is not listed on the uh, London Stock Exchange. Right, and to qualify for investor relief, shares must be newly issued shares acquired by subscription, owned for at least three years after the 6th of April 2016. Right, and the last topic of our, uh, this video is transfer between spouses. So, if I transfer any asset to my uh, spouse, my uh, wife, uh, that will have no impact for capital gains tax purposes. So, the cost is going to be equal to the sales proceeds. So there will be no capital gains tax on that. As you can see on your screen, disposal and transfer of assets between spouses give rise to no capital gains tax, no gain, no loss. And when the asset is eventually disposed of by someone else other than the spouse, then the gain is calculated on the base of the original cost of purchase, which is the net transfer. Right? So we will see remaining part of our capital gains tax in the next video. Uh, that's it for this video and I will see you in the next video and we'll continue with capital gains tax. Uh, my throat is a little dry so I'll uh, drink a glass of water and then I'll see you in, a, uh, in the next video. Thank you very much and goodbye.